Hi, this is episode 55. Hello and welcome back. Um, do you like the beard, by the way? This is for my Distinguished Gentleman's Ride, which is in just three weeks. So I'll put a little link in the uh, description here. If you want to sponsor me, that'd be much appreciated. Uh, give as much as you can for men's health charities. That's all very good. Um, also, don't forget to click on the subscribe and the bell button. That's a given. Okay, uh, back to part two, and we're rebuilding our Bing 32s. Next task then is to uh, just clean out all these airways um, with a bit of this stuff. It's very bad for your eyes, so I will be using these uh, glasses to protect myself. But essentially, you want to basically get all the all the holes. And give them a squirt or two. Cool. Let's put paper down actually. <clears throat> it's quite cool to see where the stuff comes out. So that is the um, is the fuel supply for the choke. So when that sits on on there, yeah. So there's a little hole even there which means that this little chamber fills up with uh, with fuel and then that can suck petrol out into the into the choke assembly so that's what that one does and while we're at it and let's have a quick uh, look at that Yeah, see that coming out? That's good. So that works. How does the overflow work? Yep, that works as well. Good. Looks like these parts dry off naturally, of course. So basically you just need to find every orifice you can and blow some of this stuff through it. Make sure it's all super clean. Actually, well, well what about chokes? Let me just show you this. So obviously that that uh, that's the bit that sits on there. Air comes in from this hole here. See that? That's the that's the air intake for the choke. That's the fuel intake for the choke we've just seen comes in here, and it's mixed using this thing here. Um, let's touch it that way up. But look at that. That's quite badly damaged, isn't it? So I shall. Order replacement. So I'm going to assemble this, uh, reassemble this, kind of with this on for the time being. I'm not going to replace the O-ring, which is there. There's an O-ring which I put on the new one, but essentially I'll uh, I'll not put the gasket on. I'll not put the O-ring on. I'll do that when the new one of those arrives. The uh, choke disc. But yeah. It's quite strange because you, that looks like it's abrasion wear from the inside of the of the choke mechanism, but there was no debris in here when I opened it, and there's also no real corresponding wear on that surface. So, I mean that this thing sticks out a little bit, it goes in that hole there. So that's the you can see it seems like a yeah you can see it's a strange place to be worn anyway hey ho 
We're going to briefly talk O-rings. I've obviously got a, got a set, got a kit from Motorworks with all the all the O-rings in. Uh, there's, these, there's four of these little tiny ones. Yeah, they're all the same size. Keep them in one bag. Um, and then there's uh, three of the sizes. The the largest one goes on the on the main jet. It's actually the uh, the jet stock uh, main jet. Just quickly show you. There's made made up of a, um, a needle jet and atomizer, which go together thus. Yeah, and then the jet stock just sits on top of that like that. And then the actual jet, the one with the number on, which we are going to change. This is a 135. Goes through its washer and screws in thus. So that essentially is the main jet thing. Anyway, it's the large, the large um, O-ring goes in. A point with a screwdriver. This groove here. Okay next size down goes on the butterfly shaft and that goes on this gap here which is the uh, the inner one of the two okay the next size down actually goes on the choke um so this one i haven't removed so that rather flattened one there so that's where that goes i say I won't put that on them one just yet and then the 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 four small ones well the, the two for each carb they go on the uh, the idle jet and the air screw which is that way around and that way around there you go idle jet and air screw super right now it's time for reassembly i shall be referring to my friend the clamor manual yeah this is the uh, the bible and those of you who want to pause the video at this point that's the uh, that's the task ahead. Let's crack on. What's come in the post since I was filming this yesterday? Are my new jets? So uh, again, courtesy of my friends at Motorworks. I don't my friends. I'm a customer. Um, okay, so let's try and do this without dropping the buggers. Old and new, focus, focus, focus. So one, three, fives were the old ones, and the new one is. I can't even read that. What did I order? Right, one four is. Okay. So, I don't know if we can see the the size in the hole. They're different, but. It's a bigger hole. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, it looks the same, but it's a bigger number stamped on it. So there you go. Right, 140s. Bit of a science behind um, behind rejecting your carbs, which um, I'll quickly go into. I I found a page on a site which, uh, well, first of all, asked for a bit of advice. And to be honest with you, I got no... Oh, flicker. I got no sound advice from anyone about how to jet your carbs. The half of them said, don't use pod filters. The other half said, it depends what you're doing. So uh, no advice at all of use. Um, I found one, um, one bit of uh, actual instruction on the Cafe, um, Cafe Racer web shop site. Well, I'll just actually put that page up now. So that was the advice I got. Uh, it's a bit of maths. Basically, um, you need to go bigger because I need to get more air through my machine, uh, through, my, through my carb to mix with the fuel. Um, so yeah, uh, I worked out that I need to go up five, five points. So I went up that. It's trial and error. I'm gonna try it with, with five up. If that's not enough, I'll go the next size up again. So yeah. Um, yeah, right, let's start the reassembly. 
thought I'd just actually show you the uh, the spark plug which um, linked this carb so yes that's a little bit carbony which would uh, mean that it's running rich um, and therefore you think well, actually there's too much uh, uh, fuel getting in the the mixture but the, the reality is it's running rich because because it runs lean uh, without the choke I'm actually running it a lot with the choke on which is clearly too rich for it so even though that that spark plug says that's that's too rich a mix uh, I actually know that that's because I'm um, I'm riding it with the choke on and because I've put these manual chokes on yeah you, it's not easy to adjust when you're riding it so actually I'm actually riding it with the choke on too much um, and it runs like a dog so there you go that's the that's the reason behind that so the idea is that after I've run this for a little bit longer with the new jets in um, we'll have a much more um, much cleaner spark plug right then <clears throat> let's get these o-rings on so to protect what i'm going to do is i'm going to get these things on um over the threads uh but to protect the o-ring i'm going to use a bit of this ptfe tape to um to just protect the rubber a little bit i oh, best we do it on camera isn't it This is always much fiddlier when you're filming it, you know. Don't know why that is. Right, there you go. So also a little square of WD just to make it all slip on a bit easier. Little stretch. And then Try and get this bugger on here. There you go. It's actually probably easier without gloves on as well. There you go. So that one's on. Look at that. Beautiful. One down. I should actually glide on. Hey, there you go. Marvellous. Right then, so I D PTFE those. They're all good to go. Let's start with our butterfly valve that sits in there like that that's a, such a good fit such a good fit um right now then you remember from past lives there is a dimple which is there you see that dimple front and top so that's going to sit in there like that okay now we're going to have to get a bit of a bit of jiggery poker to get this exactly right but um which I'll probably do off camera, but essentially you need to make sure by holding up to the light that you've got a really good seal on it. I'm doing this off camera, just take my word for it. Um, and then a bit of um, thread lock on my screws and I'll screw those in. So um, I'm going to do it off camera. Right, next thing to do is to uh, put this stop on. There's a groove there, which you can see that that's the second groove on the on the 
shaft. Okay, and let's screw that on. Okay, there's a bit of play in this. Yeah, so just before I see that, just before I tighten up, I must get sure it's clear of that as well. Super good. So I'll just nip that up. Okay, and then the next thing is these two pieces which go together um, that way around. Obviously, the two holes line up. That slips on there. And this is the stopper for the, for the butterfly. And I've got a, whoops. I've got a wave washer and I've got a nut to go on there. And then what I'm going to do, just holding that, I'm just going to tighten this or drive this through just until it lifts the butterfly off the walls of the air intake. You just feel it lift. There you go. So that way. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Let's look at jets now. Actually, let's just pop this one in first. This is the um, this is the vacuum takeoff, isn't it? Just it's not in the way. Let's start with the main jet then. So uh, we've got the um, needle jet and the atomizer which go together thus, yeah? And they drop in there, like so. Oops, can't see that end. And um, if I start the butterfly, yeah, so you can see that, that the sort of top part sticks out inside. That's the correct way of doing it. Then I'm going to throw this valve in here. It's actually called the jet stock. Now then, I'm going to put a bit of anti-seize on it on the grounds that it's in here. I don't know if you can quite see it. There's a little bit of corrosion of the threads. So, I'm not overly pleased by that. So a little bit of anti-seize on here might just give us A bit of an easy passage. Yeah, so straight away that's tight there. So we're going to have to. I think it's the right size. Yeah. Drive that. Oh, drive that in. I must admit. This didn't come out that easily. Bit of WD on it. It's hard to do with the camera in the way, I'm honest with you. Yeah, so what I've done there is I've um, I put that in the vise just to hold it steady while I drive that down slowly, uh, keeping uh, an eye on this little thing here. So this is this was a little bit loose, and then I just nipped it up. Okay, so next on there is a washer followed by our new jet. 
Okie Koki. Which I think is that size. Yes, it is. There you go. Okay, idle jet drops in there. That size. Next, we've got the um, mixture adjustment screw. Uh -huh. In, half, one, out. Okay, I'm just going to check the tip of the needle valve. That's actually, it's got a mark on it, but it's not worn if you get my drift so anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna reuse that so that drops in that hole which is all good and then this is the tab that presses down the needle valve so let's just pop this, I'll do it from this end. So it's stiff that. Not sure where that is. Then I'm going to pop the this pin back in. Before I fully seat it, I was going to check the level of the float. And you do that by checking the point at which that little tab touches the top of the float valve in there, which you can possibly see. I'll change my camera, camera angle and do it that way. Okay, this isn't easy to do on camera, but I'll have a go. So to get the um, to get this level right, so the way this works is there's a small tab on the float, which you can see just in there and that pushes down on the needle valve so needle valve in there see the tip of it there so what we're after is that needs to just be touching yeah at the point where this line here is parallel with this line here and I would say, chaps, that's about on the money, wouldn't you? Yeah? I'm going to tip it this way. Okay. Let me zoom that. Okay, zoomed. That's just touching there. Okay, so if we're happy with that, we'll tap the pin in. There you go. Lovely. Okay, next I'll drop my cork gasket on there make sure that's seated properly and then
up in the float bowl and reattach the retaining clip. Super. Right then. Let's do the diaphragm. Right, new diaphragm from my kit. Um, a couple of things to notice about the diaphragm is there's a couple of uh, key locating parts. You can see that there. There's there's that tab there, and then there's a tab there, which you can see. So this locating tab here fits into this little location here. So just need to make sure that lines up. That's all groovy. And then this clamping plate sits on the top. Equally groovy. And then I've got four of these screws with a washer on. Uh, apparently it's quite common for that washer to be missing, but uh, luckily I've got all four on this. So I'm gonna just tighten these up. Do, 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 do. That looks good. And then give those a nip up. Super important you get a really airtight seal around there. Because any air leaking in will massively affect the carburetor performance. Okay, I think we've probably done that. Final little nip. So when we're putting the the slide in here, that needs to this tab here. Okay, this tab here needs to line up with that gap there. So that will go in like so. Yeah, which is all good. Um, but I need to put the needle in first. So if you recall, I'm not altering um, the setting on the needle. Um, also, the needle on inspection is in is in super condition. Uh, so this simply goes in on this aluminium um, screw so I'll drop the needle in like so boom an aluminium screw in there I will pour, uh, put a bit of anisease on that though just drop that in there and tighten that up and then we're going to and the pin up with the hole. Okay, so getting these locating tabs right is is super important because it kind of sets the orientation of the slide. Obviously, it needs to be central. So that's what you're trying to get. So if this was if this was off kilter, you would see inside straight away. Yeah, it needs to be nice and straight, and that's what that tab does for you. It helps you get it nice and straight. Perfect. So the spring can go on. Cap can go on. Mm, see how that slid out of place there? That's not good, is it? Good. Then we can drop a couple of screws in. And that's us almost done. Just knit it nice and tight. OK, 
Okay, and the last thing then is just to pop the, uh, the throttle spring back on, which I'll do with a little screwdriver. Oh. Like so. Might be worth it before I take the other one apart to compare side by side. That's uh Yeah, that is a definite improvement, wouldn't you say? Well, I think side by side, these look good. Look at that murky mess in there. And that's the new one, lovely jubbly. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, happy delivery. And that's my new right hand choke disc. Yeah. Compare and contrast to the other one. Anyway. So there is a dimple in the top and that dimple points to the oil intake so it goes that way yeah so um, the air intake being that bit there so that goes on that goes on Tell you what I'll do actually, I'll push that in there first. Super good. And then that locates like so. We have our four screws. And which choice of screwdriver are we going to use? We're going to use that one. Dead easy. Okay, let's just make sure that seats nicely. you have it jolly good what I do now is to reattach my choke um, which if you recall is super simple Very simple that went on. Go on, there you go. It's just a jiggle away. Yep. There you go. Fully fell on that time. Attach my choke. Wave washer. 
and a bolt nut. I always say bolt there. go we shall tighten that up which one is it not that that one okay making sure not to leverage against these shoulder things here need to There you go. And then I can reattach my choke like so. There's a hole in there somewhere. There it is. Okay, you can tighten that up nicely. Is that the, uh, no it's not. Plenty of, plenty of spanners required on this. I'll just tighten that up. I do believe it's a little one. Yep. There you have it. One finished carb right on to the next one well I hope you found that informative interesting and entertaining um, rejetting is a is a dark art um, don't claim to have have any superior knowledge so please don't ask me any rejecting questions um just do your research and um and, and go your own way with that but listen thanks very much for watching like subscribe answers questions all that see you next time